What's up guys, my name is Dari and I hope that you have a great day because today we're going to talk about how to validate the incoming data in Laravel. Because of you guys, I've reached something very special that I never ever dreamed about reaching in one year. This channel got over 5k subscribers in 2020 and I can't thank every single person that watches my video enough. I want to do a simple $50 Amazon gift card giveaway and there's not a lot that you need to do. I recently created an Instagram account, which I have linked in the description down below. And this is not a sponsored video by Amazon or YouTube. I just want to give something back to the people that support me. The only thing you need to do is to follow me on Instagram, write down why you think you should win the giveaway on my latest post. And if you have any idea of a giveaway item that I could do in the future, just write it down as well. I don't need any personal data or whatsoever. And the giveaway will end on the 8th of February. What we have done so far was accepting requests from the forms and sending it immediately back to the database without doing any checks. Now to give you an example, let's go to Google Chrome. Let's create a new car and let's add the input fields. So the brand name is Mercedes. The founded is, well, it should be an integer because we're trying to add the year where a car brand has been found. So what we could do is to add a string right here. So let's say Dari. The description is Mercedes as well. Let's submit our form. And right here, we're getting an error. So let's see what it is. We're getting a general error, incorrect integer value. Our database is accepting an integer for the input field found it, as you could see right here. And what we have done was sending back a string to the database. So let's fix stuff like this. I want to divide the video in two chapters. First, we're going to cover the controller validation, and then we're going to cover the form requests. Laravel has quite a few ways how you could validate incoming data. And I want to split that section in two since we have two primary options. So let's go back to our code, right into the store method that we have. And let me actually remove the comments because we don't need it. The request object that we have right inside of a controller right here has a validate method that we could use and it will provide a convenient shortcut for the most common validation workflow. What we need to do is to add it right above where we create a car. So let's say request validate. Just like creating a new car, we need to pass in an array right here. So let's add brackets and let's hit enter. Inside the array, we need to pass in the values that we have inside our input field. So let's say we have our name, pointer, and a value. Now the value right here needs to be required. So we're basically telling our application, every single user needs to fill in a name. Now let's do the same thing for found it, which is required as well. And for the description, we want to set the value to required as well. Right here, you can see five lines of code. And if you have worked with PHP before, you might think that this is definitely not enough to do validation. Well, the lines that you see on our screen right now are doing way more validation than you actually think. Based on what we have entered right here, it will determine what kind of error message needs to be printed out. So let's rewind. Let me explain to you step by step what this method does. First, the validate method will check the incoming data from the request and check whether it is true or not. If it is valid, so if it's true, we will move outside of the request and we will create a new car. So let me add it as a comment. If it's valid, it will proceed. So whenever our validation is valid, it will create a car. But what will it do if it's not valid? Well, it will throw a validation exception. And then it will redirect you to the previous page with all the necessary validation errors. Next to setting our input fields equal to required, we could use a couple other rules. Now to add them, we need to separate them with a pipe. So let's go right after required for the name. Let's add a pipe. And what we want to do is to say that our name is unique and it needs to be on the table cars. So we will look in the table cars to see if let's say a name already exists. And based on that, it will send back an error message or it will let you continue to create a car. Now for the founded, let's add a new rule. Let's say that it has to be an integer 
another pipe. The minimum is zero pipe. The maximum is 2021. So the year that the car has been found has a minimum year of zero and a maximum of 2021. Now right here, we're passing it in as an array, but you could also pass it in as a two dimensional array. So what we could do is to add brackets right around required, just like this, comma, and let's do the same thing for unique. Just like this. But this is not something I recommend. I prefer to use the pipes. So let me undo everything. All right. Now there's a bunch of rules that you could use right here, and it will take ages to add them all in one single video. I'll recommend you to look at the Laravel documentation to see which ones there are. I will only show you the necessary ones that I always use. And during the next few videos, you'll be seeing some more rules that you could add. Now, if we hop to our browser and refresh it, our error message is still appearing on the screen. That's because we somehow need to print it out in the UI. So let's go to our create.blade.php right here. And let's go to the bottom of our page. And let's say right below our form, create an if statement. And what we want to do is to use the global errors variable. And we want to see if there are any errors. So if there are errors, we want to print out some stuff. So first a div with a class of width dash four forward slash eight. Margin is auto and the text, excuse me, and the text is center. So then we need to create it for each loop because we're getting back an array. So there could be more than one error message. We want to loop over errors, all. So all the errors that we have as one single error. And what we want to do then is to print them out as a list item. Let's give our list item a class of text-red-500 and list-none. And inside our list item, let's print out variable error. Save it. Let's go to Google Chrome. Refresh the page. Let's actually undo it. Add a new car. Let's say, give it the name of Mercedes found it in, let's say a string, description is Mercedes as well. Let's submit it. And the found it must be an integer have been printed out, but something happened with our UI. So let's go to our create blade again. Well, let's copy your entire if statement and let's paste it right below our div. Save it, Google Chrome, refresh the page. And let's actually do it one more time, Mercedes, 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 submit, and the founded must be an integer have been printed out. Let's add one more car without a name. So founded is 1918, description is Mercedes, submit, and the name field is required has been printed out. And this is how it works. We haven't set the messages right here that will be printed out whenever the request goes wrong. Now, a cool thing Laravel provides for us is to create our own custom rules. And in order to do that, we need to run an artisan command. So let's hop to the command line. In here, let's say PHP artisan make me a new rule called uppercase. Let's hit enter. And our rule has been created successfully. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Now to customize our rule, we need to go right inside the app folder that we have. And then you can see a rules directory right here that has been created. So let's open it. And you can see the uppercase.php file. If we open it, you see two methods that are created for us. Obviously we have the construct, but we have the passes and the message. Now let's start off with the passes. Now this accepts an attribute name as the first param and the user provided value as the second param. What it will do is return a Boolean, whether or not the input passes the validation rule. Then it will go to the message method that we have right there, which will return the validation error message. So let's create it. In the passes, let's say return string to upper. We want to pass in the value and we want to equal, 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 see if it's equal to value. Now for the message that we have right there, let's get rid of everything in here. We could say that the 
call an attribute, which is the placeholder in your message for the attribute name. So let's say the attribute must be uppercase. Let's save it. And this won't immediately work because we need to call it somehow inside our controller. So let's go to our cars controller at the top of our page. Let's require the file. So use app forward slash rules forward slash uppercase. Let's go back to our store method. So let's say that we want to tell our application that the name needs to be in uppercase. So let's get rid of the rules that we have. And let's say that we want to create a new instance of our uppercase that we created. So new uppercase without a typo, new uppercase. All right, if we save it, let's go to the browser, refresh it, write down a brand name without a capital, founded in 1918, and the description is Mercedes, submit it. The name must be uppercase, have been printed out, and this is the exact message that we created in our uppercase.php. So the attribute must be uppercase. Now, obviously, I'm not really sure if this is the right example, but it's just to show you how these little things that make Laravel so incredible work. This was it for this video where I showed you how to validate forms through the controller. If you do like my videos and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.